berkunjung ke negara bagian Texas untuk menangani bencana badai Harvey. Sebelumnya ia berbicara dengan Perdana Menteri Jepang Shinzo Abe dan keduanya sepakat meningkatkan tekanan kepada Pyongyang. Melalui pernyataan tertulis, Presiden Trump menyatakan semua opsi tengah dipertimbangkan. Di New York, Dewan Keamanan PBB menggelar pertemuan darurat untuk membahas krisis ini. No country should have missiles flying over them like those 130 million people in Japan. It's unacceptable. They have violated every single UN Security Council resolution that we've had. And so I think something serious has to happen. Korea Utara meluncurkan rudalnya menjelang pukul 6 pagi waktu Jepang membuat Tokyo menyatakan kondisi darurat dan memerintahkan rakyat di wilayah utara Jepang berlindung. Setelah melintas pulau Hokkaido, rudal jatuh di Samudra Pasifik sekitar 1180 km dari pantai Jepang. Rudal balistik ini diduga jenis Wasong 12 jarak menengah yang selama ini diancam akan diluncurkan Pyongyang ke wilayah Amerika Guam. Namun Korea Utara mengarahkannya ke timur guna menunjukkan kapabilitas tanpa melanggar batas kesabaran Amerika Serikat. Dari Jenewa, Duta Besar Korea Utara untuk PBB menyatakan akan terus mengembangkan kapasitas nuklir sepanjang Amerika Serikat mengancam dengan senjata nuklir dan latihan militer di kawasan. The US pressure and the provocative act will only provide for the justification for the DPRK's measure to strengthen its self-defense capabilities. Peluncuran rudal ini merupakan yang pertama kalinya berhasil melintasi Jepang dan rudal keempat yang diluncurkan Pyongyang dalam empat hari terakhir. Dari Washington, Pat Siwida Kuswara. Stay by for five, you're back. Hang it on five! Fire five. Meanwhile, North Korea unveiled a photo that captured the attention of the world. It shows that the regime may be close to completing a new type of submarine-launched ballistic missile. Kim Yeon-bin zooms in on the development which could further escalate tensions on the peninsula. A recent photo unveiled by Pyongyang indicates that the regime is close to developing a new submarine ballistic missile known as the Pukuksong-3. The chart shows the structure of the SRBM displayed behind North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. During his visit to the Chemical Material Institute at the Academy of Defense Science earlier this week, many experts believe that North Korea could be in the final stages of developing the missile. In a recent video, Pyongyang released footage of possible body of a Pukuksong-3 SLBM, so I believe it is near completion. Earlier this year, the regime fired a new intermediate-range SLBM known as the Pukuksong-2, which is known to use a solid fuel engine. North Korea is trying to perfect the solid fuel engine since this makes it harder for satellites to detect the missiles before launch. Experts say that the regime could have even test launched the Pukuksan 3 engine in their recent cold launch test in late July. I believe the recent three cold launch engine tests from the regime were from the newly built SLBM. Experts say North Korea will consider the most effective date to maximize their provocations when planning to test launch the new missiles. Kim Yong-bin, Arya News. Yeah. Uh -huh.
Chicago and Santorino, the ship's wrecked for them with the following extension of some sort of the great Today, South Korea and China mark a quarter of a century of diplomatic ties to celebrate the occasion that two nations' leaders exchange messages of congratulation. According to Seoul's foreign ministry, President Moon Jae-in said the bilateral relations improved and matured rapidly as the governments and their respective people's efforts, communication and cooperation cultivated mutual understanding and trust. He expressed hopes that ties will further develop into a, quote, substantial strategic cooperative partnership. In response, Chinese President Xi Jinping stressed the importance of strong bilateral relations, saying he hopes to advance ties and added the two nations will be able to handle their differences appropriately by solidifying mutual trust. It's, it's a further testing, it's a further ratcheting up of uh, uh, Kim Jong-un, the leader of North Korea, to leverage the West for, uh, for talks. At the same time, he is improving his uh, missile capabilities. It's a, it was really basically an inter intermediate uh, ballistic missile. It could not have reached the United States. And we've been absolutely stalemated on any policy progression with respect to North Korea. Clearly, we don't want to see a nuclear war happening uh, on the Korean Peninsula that would quickly expand into other parts of the Asia Pacific. But I have to say, as an American citizen, that the United States is showing a lot of hypocrisy over this issue. Clearly, the United States is doing something far greater in terms of uh, its capability than North Korea is. So the U.S. complains and screams about North Korea, but is doing essentially the same thing. North Korea. With its back turned to the rest of the world, the reclusive state is focused mainly on its bargaining chip, its weapons program. In terms of missile development, it's been pushing ahead at a faster speed than ever before. Their latest test launch proved the regime's nearing a level where it can strike the U.S. mainland with nuclear-tipped ICBM. In our news features tonight, Oh jung illustrates how far the Hermit Kingdom has come in nuclear war miniaturization and missile atmospheric re-entry technology. Uh, during the decades-old tug-of-war with North Korea, the general understanding of North Korea crossing the line has been the regime being able to strike the continental United States with a nuclear-tipped ICBM. How one arrives at that assessment is complicated, but the North's second ICBM test in late July did suggest that it might be possible. North Korea has shown us that its missile can fly up to 7 or 8,000 kilometers if launched on a flatter trajectory that can reach the western coast of America. Pyongyang's final destination is Washington, the center of the U.S. mainland. To make that happen, there are two crucial technologies Pyongyang needs to develop. First, having a light enough nuclear warhead or strong enough engine to reach long-distance targets. And second, having the missile successfully re-enter the atmosphere. How far has North Korea come in these two technologies, and what's the international community's assessment? To increase the missile's airborne distance, the nuclear warhead has to be as small and light as possible. According to the U.S.-based Washington Post, a confidential U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency analysis early this month suggested that Pyongyang has produced a miniaturized nuclear warhead. Japan's defense white paper also wrote the North may have miniaturized nuclear warheads. The ideal weight of a nuclear warhead designed for an ICBM is generally seen to be around the 500 kilogram range. But even if the warhead isn't at the ideal weight, experts say if the engine's strong enough, Pyongyang's missile can reach long-distance targets. If the North can fire its missile to the U.S. with its current engine, that means the North has lightened its warhead enough. I've conducted a virtual simulation after the recent launches. 
The North's missile can carry a 700-kilogram nuclear warhead to the U.S. with the engine it has now. The North's ICBM may be able to fly far enough, but it seems the regime hasn't completed missile re-entry technology as of yet. An ICBM usually flies 1,000 to 1,500 kilometers off the ground, and when it re-enters the atmosphere, it falls at a speed of 30,000 kilometers per hour. The missile has to endure frictional heat of 7,000 to 8,000 degrees Celsius, as well as massive pressure and vibrations to protect the nuclear bomb inside for successful detonation. The missile's nose cone has to be thoroughly designed to ensure 50 times the usual gravitational force. And no matter how much you develop a rocket engine, it can't be perfect because it can fail so easily with only the smallest of errors. Also, it's very rare to put the technology into real use after a few tests. In order to fall into nearby waters, the North's Hwasong 14s were launched at a steep trajectory to reach 2,800 and 3,700 kilometers of the ground during July's tests, much higher than usual ICBMs. Many say that is the reason why the North's missile launch failed to demonstrate successful atmospheric reentry. The U.S. Central Intelligence Agency assesses that North Korea's ICBM re-entry vehicles may perform adequately if flown on a normal trajectory, but skepticism still remains. They haven't demonstrated that they have anywhere near a reliable launch capability for an ICBM or even an intermediate range ballistic missile that could target Guam. What I would expect is they'd want to do several more tests. That would, that would involve a long distance and a re-entry vehicle coming back in. Because uh, in the end, the, the technology or the engineering of re-entry vehicles is very much a hands-on um, development. I mean, it, it, theory can work to a certain point, but you really just have to do it over and over again and see what works and doesn't work. And a photo released by North Korea state media on Wednesday hints that the reclusive regime is on its way to developing another three-stage ICBM Hwasong-13, which can fly even farther than the Hwasong-14 missiles launched in July. It seems there is not much time left until Pyongyang completes its desired level of nuclear and missile power, with experts expecting the re-entry technology to be completed within the next few years. Bo Jong-hee, Arirang News.